What's up? This is Jerry Roush from Glass Cloud, and you're watching Montreal HC Live. You're an MTL, bitch! <laughs> from Montreal HC Live, and I'm here with Jerry from Glass Club. Yeah. Uh, it's the end of the tour with Silver Scene tomorrow. How's it been so far? Uh, it's been really, really awesome. Um, we, we didn't know the Silver Scene guys until this tour started, so we didn't know how it was going to be. And a lot of the times when you're on tour, um, the headlining band really makes or breaks if the tour is going to be fun or smooth. And these guys are like the nicest dudes I ever met, so it's been awesome. Most of the shows have been sold out. Um, so, so that's very, very cool. And, um, and, uh, actually the, tomorrow is the last day of the, this is how the wind shifts tour, but then we do another show with just us and Silverstein headlining, um, somewhere else. I don't remember the name of the place, but somewhere. So we got a couple more days with the guys, so we're nice. more stoked. Awesome. Yeah. Uh, you guys have been pretty busy, uh, playing a bunch of festivals, screaming like you mean it, the AP tour. How's, uh, touring life, uh, been so far? You know, like uh, all the incidents you guys have had. Yeah, I mean, it's been pretty pretty normal for me. I mean, I've Josh, my guitarist, and I we've been touring for a while, so it's pretty much like the same same shit, different toilet for us. But uh, but Chad and Trav, this is their first touring gig, so they're still kind of getting used to it. So that's it's cool to see them grow with it. Um, we have had a lot of uh, unexpected van troubles. We flipped our van on the on the AP tour. Um, so that's gone and, and so we have to rent vans and you never know what you're getting when you rent something you, you know pictures online look really awesome and then it shows up and you're like what? <laughs> so uh, we've been through a couple vans already on this tour um, we're just you know my, I'm, I'm, my main thing is not really about how comfortable we are it's about if we're going to make the show or not you know I want to make right. sure we're going to play the show yeah on time or even yeah. at all yeah um, it's not your first time touring with uh, like Moth to Flames. How's your relationship with them? Yeah, this is actually our, with us being such a new band and only have done like four or five tours. Three of them have been with like Moth to Flames, so it's really dope because when you show up to a tour, you never really know who's who. You don't know if that's the singer of the band or the merch guy or the the bass player. So it's like the first few days are all it was really awkward. Everybody's walking around just going, "Good show, man," <laughs> even though you don't know who they are. And you know, and we we hate like Monster Flames, so like we okay. show up and we just a fist fight every day. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I say that because they're sitting right there looking at me because they they heard the question. <laughs> no, we love those dudes, so it's cool. So we we show up every day and instead of being like, "Hey, who are you? What's up?" It's just like, "Yeah, what up." We love the guys. They love us back. We know they do. <laughs> yeah, it's awesome. It's awesome being able to, It's cool to be able to tour with your friends because, I mean, we've toured with uh, a few bands already a couple of times and it's like, we might not necessarily get along with them, but we still have to see them. So it's just like, a, hey, cool. Yeah, yeah, all right, man. But it's not, it's not like that with them. Um, I've been doing guest vocals with them on this tour, which is really fun for me because I just get to go out and bro down with them. Wicked. You know? So, yeah. Can we expect that tonight? Yep. Nice. <laughs> Um, your album, The Royal Thousands, was released July 3rd. Yeah. Um, how have fans responded to the new album? It's been good. Um, we, we spent a while putting the, the, the album together. We're, um, my guitarist, Josh, is a madman. Like, he plays everything, and he, and he, uh, he can write a song an hour if he, if he wanted to. And um, uh, Chad and Travis, my, my drummer bassist, went to Berkeley, so they are just theoretically trained in music and um uh so it's um it's been well i mean it's we're more of a musician's band a lot of people like to say we're not just like cute guys that like to look cool uh so maybe a lot of the scene kids might not really grasp it just yet because we're not as cute or choreographed on stage as a lot of the people but uh but um, people that know have a good ear for music have been been saying they like it, and so that matters more to me than you guys look cute. You know, like I don't <laughs> fucking care about stuff for like sure. that. You know what I'm yeah. saying? So yeah. it's been well. Um, so it's just you know, I, I I don't really really care if people hate it or love it. You know, we just did a record we wanted to do. So we hit. Yeah, I love it by the way. Thank you. <laughs> um, you guys have signed with Equal Vision. Have you guys uh, had any previous relationships? Um, yeah, yeah. Um, we were signed Equal Vision from the start, really. Uh, I've, I've been on them for six years now. 
um, as a as a solo personal like artist type situation. My first band, I was in Skye's Airplane. We were signed to Equal Vision, and when I quit them, I was still legally under contract with them. No matter what projects I sang right. for or did, I was still always signed to them. So when the idea of this band came up about, I uh, just pretty much was like, hey, Equal Vision, I'm gonna start a band. They're like, cool, we'll sign it. You know, so it was just like. It was already it was already pretty much like they had first rights to it anyway, and then when um, I showed them the tracks, they were they were they were stoked on it. So, they're they're really awesome. They're great people over there. We have a really good I have a personal good relationship with everybody over there just because I've known them for a long time. So, um, so yeah, I couldn't be more happy on a label really. Wicked. Um, Joshua produced the album. Uh, we know he's a multi instrumentalist. Is he the handyman of the men? Yes. Yeah. He he's the dude that sets up our set you know we, we run like backing tracks and stuff we play with like a laptop going on um like most bands do these days so um he's the one that does puts all that together he arranges the songs he you know does all the all the instruments on the songs bass guitars drums everything and uh and um so yeah he's literally like the the dude he's very very prolific with with his work he works super hard if he ever has a free time he's like i gotta be doing this you know and so it's good to have someone like that in the band because not everybody's like that some people might like to slack off so if uh you know if you got someone that's sitting there doing all the work it's it's good you know josh is the man too i mean there's literally nothing that i could do that's going to be better than he's going to do so i uh i'm real smart with what i do with the band and Josh is the fucking man. I step back and say, handle. I mean, I'm a fan of him personally anyway. Before Glass Cloud existed, I was a fan of, of, of Danza. So yeah. when he writes the tracks, I'm sitting there like, yes, 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 yes. Like, so it's like, there's nothing for me to really do or say. It's just cool. Let's put vocals on this, you know. And uh, so that's that's how that goes. Yeah. But he's definitely the handyman. Definitely the fucking father figure. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Travis and Chad both attended Berkeley College, like you stated before. Um, how has the legendary college helped you to refine your style and composition? Um, it's, well, I mean, the songs themselves were already kind of written, but we did write a song in the studio, and it's, um, me and Josh have no formal training. We just play everything from our heart, and, um, you know, we don't play from our brain at all, and, uh, um, but we have dudes in our band that can sit there and tell, oh, well, this is the G7 diminished chord over the seventh and it modulates and then demodulates. And I'm like, what? <laughs> you know, I'll sit there and sing something and they'll tell me what I just did. Or Josh will play something <laughs> yeah. and they tell him what he just did. But we just do it but um, how, how we like it. But uh, it's been really cool because, like I said, it's we learn. I learn a lot from them. Like, I don't go to the college, but I'm learning stuff about music yeah. theory that I sure. didn't ever need to know or care to know, but I know now, you know. it's um, So that's cool. And also... Um, my my bassist uh, jo- uh, chat, my bassist Travis has um, he has a, a songwriting degree, so when it came time to write like the songs, like he's a, he's an awesome lyricist. He writes really really good lyrics, um, so it really really helped out with that. Like knowing taking harmony classes and taking you know vocal production classes and stuff it was really cool. Him and I worked on all the vocals and stuff, so that it, that helped out. Um, but but yeah, I mean Berkeley, it's just. Those dudes are also really pro- prolific because they got graded on everything they did in music. I never had grades with yeah. that. I just did what I thought was cool. And, uh, you know, I'd say stuff. I said, that sounds cool. Let's do it. You know, and uh, so it's it's cool because they, they work hard on it. So that's dope. Uh, you guys are all pretty much uh, all childhood friends. How did you guys meet? Um, me, Chad, and Travis all like kind of grew up in the same area we've been friends for like 10 plus years uh going to shows together skateboarding together going to parties together just you know being do what kids do um i met them chad and trav have been friends for since they were like kids um and then i met them probably when we were like 13 14 15 just skateboarding going to shows uh josh wasn't he, he's not from virginia where we're from I, he came into the mix when I when I had my management put me in contact with when I needed a guitarist because I had Chad and Trav on bass and drums I needed a guitarist so there's only one dude I really wanted yeah. and it was Josh and so I sought after him and ended up getting in contact with him and then uh, so but Josh is a really fucking cool guy so it was really easy for him to be the fourth piece of the puzzle you know and uh, that's what that's what we did from the start like I know Chad and Trav and I we can get along. And uh, I've known Josh just from basic phone conversations we've had, and 
when before we ever wrote a song together, we flew him out to Virginia and we swore not to pick up an instrument and let's just hang, you know, just yeah. to see if we can hang out because we're on stage for 30 minutes, but there's 23 and a half hours out of the day that we're not going to be on stage and can we hang out together is the main thing to me. That's what my main prerogative was when I set up this band. When I was doing Glass Cloud, I wanted to make sure that we could all hang out and be on a 15 hour drive and not rip each other's heads off, you know, and uh, when Josh came into town, it was like, boom, perfectly mended, and he's just a fun dude, you know? And um, so it really, I mean, it felt like I've known him for 10 years, but you know, I've only really known him for like two years, you know, and, uh, but he's the man. So um, like I said, Chad, Trav and I, we grew up going to shows together, skateboard and all that. I used to work at a skate park. They used to come and skate at it. They used to be in a local band. I used to go and be the mosh crew for them and stuff. I would go out there and spin kick everybody and, and shit. But yeah, it's cool to be in a band with your friends. That's yeah. pretty much where, what, what the gist of it all is. Wicked. Um, did you guys have any musical projects in the past throughout yeah. those years? Um, Chad and Travis were in a band called um, called Anniversary Downfall back in the day. It was actually pretty dope. Um, it was really like a post hardcore band. I used, like I said, I used to go to the, all the shows. I would be the one where they'd be like, "Yeah, Jerry, open the pit up," and I'd be like, "All right," you know. And then, um, and then a few years later, J uh, Chad and I started a band called Raped by Tijuana. And uh, we never played any shows. We only had a couple of practices, but the songs were actually really dope. Um, I was actually doing vocals and Chad was playing drums. This is the first time we ever did something together. Never played shows, but like I said, it was cool. Then Chad and Trav did a band called The Escapists that were that was really dope. Um, really just math, like polyrhythmic metal, right. and uh, so that was cool. But um, yeah, so when we all have like a little little things we did in the past with each other and hung out and just gone to shows, gone to parties, like I said, just hanging. Cool. So, uh, what's your uh, reason to move back to Virginia? Um, I was living in LA um, with my, my previous band because that's where they were from. And uh, it was easier for me to live there instead of flying in for practice and flying out the same night just to go home. And so I, I was living there for that, for that point. But um, when I was, this is the first band that I started, that I like, created. So I wanted to actually represent my area, where I'm from. Because I'd been on stage saying, what's up, we're so-and-so from Fort Worth, we're so-and-so from LA. I'm not from Fort Worth, I'm not from LA. I don't give, I don't give a shit to represent that, those areas. You know, that's not my, that's not my roots. So I, um, I didn't mean, I didn't really want to move back to where I'm from because I kind of grew away from that place, but I still, that's where I'm from and I can't ever forget it and I, and I do like to represent it. And um, Chad and Travis were graduating from Berkeley. They were from there, so I figured it'd be a lot easier if uh, they would just, if we would all just move back there. And um, I have extra room at my house, so when Josh still lives in St. Louis, so he'll fly in, he'll fly out like the last day of tour and then he'll fly in like a week or so before tour. And then, you know, but the reasoning was just to represent Virginia, I guess. Awesome. Yeah. Hometown. Yeah. Um, you're going on tour with After the Burial with, and uh, Within the Ruins in April. Yeah. Uh, what do you guys have after that? After that tour? Yeah. Um, well, I know what we have, but I don't think it's it's announced yet, so I don't think I can say it. But it's a, <laughs> what I, I think I can actually I don't know if I can, but I'm gonna say it. if I get in trouble, I get in trouble. After, the after, well, it's after the burial, the contortionist, and within the ruins. The contortionists are really fucking dope. Check them out. Like, seriously, I don't, I don't know if y'all knew that, but they're fucking I, I weird. It's, not it's cool, but they're <laughs> one of my favorite bands to, to, to listen to. Hey, shut up! And, uh, <laughs> and, uh, yeah, after that, that's the road to Metal Fest. So it's only two weeks long just for us to go to Metal Fest in, in, in New England. And, um, after that, we're doing a full Canadian tour. But I, uh... I don't, I don't think it's announced yet, but it's, I'll just say it's full Canadian and it's a really heavy metal band that plays eight strings also. Sweet. Yeah. Now, we've done a lot of these scene tours, you know, more of the younger crowd tours, but we're going to start doing heavier stuff because we're one of those bands that can do the soft and heavy stuff and get away with it, I guess. Definitely. I'd rather be um, the, the pussy band than the heavy band on a bill, you know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. So, uh, thanks so much for... Uh, Spending time with us. Of course, man. And, uh, and